we are looking at ratios in context. Um, I've underlined context because we're, we're going to be mainly focusing on, on you know, the real world applications of ratios. So we'll first look at what are ratios, we'll, we'll kind of break them down into our, uh, our subtopics, and then we'll do a couple of exam style questions at the end. So what's the point in ratios? Well, if you've ever you know, followed a recipe book, you've probably used ratios. You know, often the recipe book might say, um, you know, this makes pancakes for four people and you've got to make pancakes for six people. You probably times all of your values, all of your you know, 200 grams or 300 grams by 1.5 to get 300 grams and 450 grams. Um, if you've ever been driving down a road and your car speedometer is in miles per hour and the road signs are in kilometers per hour, again, you use ratios to work out if you're speeding over the speed limit, right? You know, we can, if we convert between kilometers and miles, um, that's just using ratios again. So whenever we're doing conversions or whenever we're doing scaling um, or whenever we're sharing things out um, between groups of people, we're always going to be using ratios. So that's why they're, that's why they're useful. Simplifying ratios. So in general, there are, there are kind of two main rules we want to um, follow when we're, when we're writing down ratios. Um, one is we never want to have decimal points in our ratios. We never want to have a ratio that looks like this. Ideally, we would just have whole numbers, right? And so if I want to get this into a whole number, I can double that and that will give me three to eight. And that's much better than that. Likewise, we don't want to have fractions, right? You know, if I, if I was to write this as, uh, let's do another one. Let's say we've got, um, I don't know, four fifths to seven. Again, we, we don't want to have a fraction. So we can times both sides by five. We end up with four to 35. As our ratio. So um, that's our kind of first rule, right? No, no um, decimals or fractions, just whole numbers. Our second rule is we always want to have the simplest form that we can, right? If we've got, say, um, 12 to 18 as a ratio, well, I've got a common factor of six on both sides here. And so I can divide both sides by six. And in doing so, I massively simplify the ratio. And so I end up with uh, two to three. Um, so again, we don't want that. We want that. We want the simplest form that we can have. So whole numbers and a simple form. That's our that's our aim with ratios. Applying ratios. So again, we can either be kind of given a total amount. You know, let's say we're making um, I don't know, pasta bake. Um, let's say you know we're we're given six hundred grams. Um, uh, that's what the recipe tells us that how much we can make. Um, and we want to work out. You know, if we're cooking for um, I don't know, boys and girls. We want to work out how much the boys are going to have to eat. Well, <clears throat> in that case, um, you know, if we've got say boys and girls, let's say we've got uh, I don't know three boys and two girls that we're cooking for, and um, what we can do is we can say, well, in total, um, yes, yeah, these four girls. That's fine. Uh, is it? No, that's not going to go nicely. We'll do two girls. We'll, make, we'll give it a nice, nice factor. Um, let's say we've got you know we've got three plates of pasta bake for boys and two plates of pasta bake for girls. Well, in total we've got five plates that we're going to have to serve up. And we can work out how much pasta bake is going to be on each plate, right? We've got 600 in total. Um, we just use 600 grams divided by five. That gives us 120 grams on each plate. Well, if you want to work out how much the boys are going to eat in total, we just do 120 grams per plate times three plates. That gives us 600, uh, sorry, 360 grams. Um, we can also work backwards, right? You know, sometimes we're told that the uh, you know, the boys have demanded that they get 360 grams of pasta bake to eat between them. And we want to keep things even, right? We don't want the girls to have less pasta bake. Um, so what we can do is we can say, well, if we've got to make 360 grams for the boys, well, we can work out how much each boy is going to have on that plate. We can do 360 in total for the boys. Divide that by three. And that gives us the amount per plate. That's going to be 120. And if we want to have the same amount of pasta bake on each plate, we need five lots of 120, right? So we can take that 120 grams, we can times it by five, and we know we need to make 600 grams in total. And so we're kind of working forwards in one direction and backwards in the other direction. Um, we can also work with scale factors, right? You know, as I, as I mentioned, you know, with speedometers and things, that's all scale factors. Um, quite often, if you see um, on a map, even on your smartphone, right, on Google Maps or something, um, we quite often have 
a you know a map and there may or may not be a grid um, but there'll be a, a small scale box in the bottom here and you know this might be um, there's no maybe a centimeter wide this could be a one centimeter wide on your on your phone screen or on your on your map and it says this is equal to um, I don't know three kilometers well in this case if we know we're trying to get from um, you know one point to another point we can measure how many centimeters that is on our map you know, let's say that's uh, let's say that's five centimeters we can use our scale factor or our ratio to to work out how many kilometers that is in real life right so if we know that one centimeter is the equivalent to three kilometers uh, three kilometers then we know five centimeters is going to be well what's our scale factor right we've, we've got our scale factor here we know we're timesing by five on the left we therefore have to times by five on the right and we get 15 kilometers so again we're using ratios and scale factor to work out real world problems um right let's do some exam style questions to finish off with so um rosa is uh, preparing ingredients for a pizza she uses cheese toppings and dough in the ratio two to three to five so we've got cheese to toppings to dough is going to be the ratio of two to three to five and we know she uses 70 grams of dough and so again i'd always encourage you to literally we've got like two piles of cheese we've got three piles of toppings and we've got five piles of dough And we want to work out, um, you know, how much cheese and how much topping do we actually need, right? How many grams of each do we need? And so ideally, we need to know how many grams are in one pile, and we can therefore work out how many grams, um, you know, in total of cheese and toppings are they going to be? And so, how many grams are there in one pile? Well, we're, we're given this information, right? We know seventy grams um, of dough is going to be used, and so this is our our dough here. We've got five piles of dough, and we know in total. This is equal to 70 grams. So that's that's equal to five piles, right? If we want to just get how many grams is equal to one pile, well, we know we're just dividing by five, right? That's our scale factor in this case. And so if I'm dividing the right-hand side by five, I also have to divide the left-hand side by five. So 70 divided by five is gonna give us 14. We know each pile is gonna contain 14 grams. And so cheese has two piles in it, if each pile is 14 grams and we've got two piles, we've got 28 grams of cheese. And likewise, toppings, we've got three piles of toppings. Each pile is 14 grams. We've got three times 14. Um, that's going to give us 42 grams. Final question. Um, the ratio uh, 20 minutes to one hour can be written in the form 1 to n. Find the value of n. And so we don't we don't ever want to be comparing you know minutes and hours or apples to oranges or you know chalk and cheese. We want to have the same units in, in on both sides of our ratio. Otherwise, it you know it gets quite confusing in a way. We don't you know we don't know exactly what the ratio actually is. So we can say you know we could we could either convert them both to minutes or both to hours. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's say one hour is the exact same as sixty minutes. And so we can actually say. Um, the ratio we're starting with is 20 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, we now can basically ignore our, our units because we're just dealing with time. So even if we're dealing with hours or days or years, it's always going to be in the ratio of 20 to 60. We can simplify this now, right? We can, we can, um, we've got a common factor on the left and the right of 20. We can divide both sides by 20. And we can massively simplify this. We end up with um, one on the left and three on the right. And so n in this case is going to be three. That's our answer. On um, the scale map, uh, on a map is one to twenty-five thousand. How many kilometers on the ground is represented by six centimeters on the map? So we've got our ratio of one to twenty-five thousand, and we're going from one to six centimeters. Well, what's that scale factor going to be? It's going to be times by six, right? So whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right. We have to times that by six as well. 25,000 times six gives us 150,000. 
And so we know that six centimeters on the map gives us 150,000. Um, and that is the end of ratios. In